and what an honor it is to be back here in the city and what an honor it is to have so many incredible people that have been fighting for life, so many incredible people that God has inside of that building right behind me. How many of y'all know God's presence is in that building? How many know God has his Daniels? He has his Josephs. He has his leaders, and I'm so honored to announce and, and, and invite one of my friends who's in that building, who's largely, he's responsible along with so many other brave senators for taking a stand for life. Come on, let's welcome Senator Josh Hawley, come on. It's so good to see you. It's awesome to be here, isn't it? Worship the Lord here in our nation's capital. I tell you what, two years ago, two years ago this month, we were right here. It was right before the vote in the United States Senate to confirm Amy Coney Barrett as the next Supreme Court Justice. And I remember we gathered here on a Saturday or Sunday before the vote in that building. We prayed, we prayed that this would be a turning point moment for our country and a turning point moment in the fight for life. And two years later, Roe versus Wade is gone. It's gone. Let's thank the Lord for that. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for this breakthrough. You talk about a breakthrough. People say, how did it happen? It's a miracle. Nobody thought, nobody thought when Amy Coney Barrett was getting confirmed, nobody thought that Roe was about to be gone. Nobody thought that. They said it wouldn't happen. They said it'd be decades away. They said it wouldn't happen ever, ever. And they say now, how did, they still can't figure it out. How did it happen? You and I know how it happened. It happened because of Jesus. That's why it happened. It's a breakthrough. It was a breakthrough. But we need more breakthrough in our country, amen? We need more. And I don't know about you, but I'm here today for just one reason. I wanna see the fire of revival fall on the United States of America. I wanna see it. I wanna see it start here. I wanna see it start in our lives. Because you know, you can have all the programs in the world. You can have elect all of the people in the world. And yeah, we need to elect good people for sure. And we need to have, you know, folks who are gonna go and fight for us, amen to that. But you know what? There is nothing, nothing that can substitute for the fire of God as it falls in revival, amen? You know, I've been, uh, I've been thinking recently just about what it looks like to have that fire, what it looks like to seek the fire of God. And I was, I was reminded of a story about David towards the end of David's life, the end of David's kingship. There was a plague that struck the nation of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Do you remember this story? It's in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 24. And there's a plague that begins to afflict Jerusalem. And David turns to the Lord and he says, Lord, what do I do? And you know, we've got a lot of plagues that are afflicting our country right now. We got a lot of confusion out there. We got a lot of, of addiction out there. We've got the highest suicide rate in decades. We've got the highest drug addiction rate of any of our lifetimes. We've got people telling kids in schools that they're not, shouldn't be the gender that they are and they need to go change their gender and they need to go change this and that and they're not good who God made them. We've got people being told that our country is systemically evil and that the Bible is about oppression when in fact the Bible is about liberation, amen? Jesus is about freedom. We've got all kinds of confusion and all kinds of darkness and all kinds of isolation and all kinds of loneliness in our country. We've got plagues afflicting our country. What did David do? What did David do when he saw the plague? What it says in 2 Samuel 24 is, he went to where the plague was and he set up an altar. He went and he set up an altar. And then what did he do? and then he offered sacrifices. You know, a principle of the kingdom is fire falls on sacrifice. Fire falls on sacrifice. And you know what David said is he's coming to the place where he saw the angel to stop the plague. As he's coming to the place, the man who owned the ground comes out to him and he says, King David, I'll give it to you. You wanna set up an altar here? You wanna offer a sacrifice? I'll give it to you. And what does David say? David says, I will not offer sacrifices that cost me nothing. Come on. So here's the question. What are we willing to offer the Lord today? Fire falls on sacrifice. What are we willing? What sacrifice are we willing to see the fire of God fall in our lives? 
What sacrifice are we willing to offer to see the fire of God fall in this country? Are we willing to offer a sacrifice of our witness to make a bold stand for the Lord where we live, where we work? Are we willing to offer a sacrifice of praise to say, I'm going to get praise that costs me something. I'm going to get praise that's from the bottom of my heart. Are we willing to offer the Lord a sacrifice of courage? In this hour, when if you say, I'm for the Lord, I'm with Jesus, they'll persecute you, they'll mock you, they'll try and silence you, they'll try and cancel you. Are we willing to say that we will offer, for, offer the Lord a sacrifice of courage? Are we willing to give the Lord our lives? Because I tell you this, my conviction is, as you look at the scripture, revival begins when sacrifice is offered and the sacrifice the Lord wants is our lives. The sacrifice the Lord wants is our hearts. And if you look at the end of that David story, 2 Samuel 24, you know what it says? It says, when David offered the sacrifices, it ends with, and the plague was averted. So I just want to say to you tonight, are you out there? Do you want to have the fire of the Lord in your life? Do you want more? Do you want to have the experience, maybe for the first time, the fire of God, the presence of God, the purpose of God, the holiness of God? If you want that, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands in praise. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you that you are a God of fire. Thank you that you are the God of revival. Thank you that you are the God of change. Thank you that you want change for our lives, that you want fire for our lives, and that you want to, to fall on our lives a sacrifice and through us to ignite a revival in this country, the likes of which we have never seen. Lord, we offer our lives to you today anew. We offer all that we are, Lord. We offer our words. We offer our praise. We offer our courage. We offer our lives. Lord, would you come and fill us? Lord, would you come and change us? Lord, would you come and change this country? In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hey, before you leave, thank you so much. How many love that? Was that amazing? How many are grateful for men and women like this that love God and serve in our government? We've been praying all day across DC. You know, for those that don't know, we've gathered in the morning at the Lincoln Memorial, then we gathered in front of the White House. Yes, that was us, the crazy people. We prayed over the White House, we prayed over the president, the vice president, all that, and then we went to the Supreme Court, and we're here. And I just feel like a big part of our, of our calling and mandate is to bless our government, to pray for our officials. So Josh, as a sitting US Senator, um, we, we want to pray over him tonight and let our prayers be an extension over, over our nation. You know, we know these guys, the pressure they're under, uh, the, 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 the oppression that comes over them, the heaviness, the, the weights that they carry. Let's just pray right now. Come on, extend your hand. And this is according to, uh, just to help you guys that uh, struggle with this whole weird Christian nationalism thing. Let me just read this from the Bible just to help clear it up for you. It says, uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1, First of all, then I urge petitions and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? So there's your, there's your theological president. Extend your hand. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for Senator... Holy God, we thank you for his team. God, we thank you for his courageous stand. Lord, we thank you that you have men and women like him all inside of that Capitol building, Lord, inside the Senate, the House. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that your presence can go wherever it wants to. And we thank you right now that you're filling those buildings. You're filling their homes. We thank you. You're filling the Supreme Court. You're filling the White House. No one can escape your love. No one can escape your presence. And so we just pray, God, today, Lord, that us being here, that it wouldn't just be a big rah-rah worship, rah-rah loud thing, but that in the spirit we would accomplish something, that things would change, that oppression would be lifted off, that the garment of praise would come on instead of the spirit of despair. And we thank you, Lord, that leading up to these midterms, we are going to see a miracle across America. Miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. And we thank you, Lord, that you would raise up men and women just like Josh to run for office, to penetrate the darkness of the governmental arena. And we promise to pledge our support behind them. In Jesus' name, someone say amen.